Hi, and welcome back to Power Electronics, and we continue on with our series of videos on DC to AC inverters. In this video, we're going to explore in more detail total harmonic distortion and apply it to the line current through an inductive load, and this will lead to the development of uh, what's called the weighted total harmonic distortion. Here's an overview, and uh, in this video segment, we're going to review the total harmonic distortion. Uh, which we introduced earlier. We're going to explore a series RL example with a modified sine wave as the input, and then we're going to introduce the total harmonic distortion for the line current through our, our series inductive load. And finally, we will define what's called the weighted total harmonic distortion uh, for an inverter wave signal. And this all points us towards using PWM-based inverters due to the frequency content associated with the, the waveform that they generate. Two great references to look at, and I'll provide more information in the description down below. Let's review total harmonic distortion. Recall that THD was equal to the power in the higher order harmonics divided by the power in the fundamental harmonic. So we'll write that as a sum from n equal 2 to infinity. So our second, third, fourth harmonic, and it's power, so we'll square that, all divided by the power in our fundamental harmonic times 100%. Uh, we can simplify this a little bit, not too much, and show that it's equal to n equal to 2 to infinity, vn squared. Again, vn are the the harmonic components of our modified sine wave. And we had another form that we introduced in a previous video, and that was the, uh, the power total uh, uh, minus the power in our fundamental, all divided by the power in our fundamental. So again, any of these forms work. Uh, this one's based on the use of our RMS voltage to find the total power in our signal. Now let's go over and review the modified sine wave that we introduced in the previous videos. And recall we plot this on a conduction angle of one cycle, so 360 degrees would be our conduction angle. And we can map, we can map that 360 degrees into our uh, omega naught t, where omega naught is our fundamental frequency. And recall, 2 pi f naught is equal to omega naught as well. So anyways, our, our modified sine wave uh, using, I'm going to assume we used an H bridge, was off for a conduction angle of alpha. So that's alpha degrees. And we switch our, our load voltage to plus VDC. And then right before 180 degrees, alpha degrees before 180 degrees, we switch off. We come back down to zero. And then we switch down to minus VDC. And then up alpha degrees before 360, we come up. And so here's our output waveform across the load. And uh, recall that the... the uh, Fourier series on this waveform resulted in harmonics Vn equal to 4 Vdc all over pi times n cosine alpha n, where alpha was this angle uh, before we started. Uh, and this was for odd harmonics n equal to 1, 3, 5, 7, so on and so forth. So that's our modified sine wave in the harmonic content. Now let's apply this to a, a, a wave where we have our DC voltage equal to 100 volts, and we're going to have a conduction angle offset of 30 degrees. And from that we have our, our Vn is equal to 400, and the units of volts, all over pi n, cosine n times 30 degrees. And one of the things we'll note here is when n is equal to 3, our third harmonic 
is equal to zero because cosine 90 degrees is equal to zero. We see that over here. And here I have a table inserted doing all the calculations for the values of our harmonic uh, magnitudes. Uh, we'll also see that our ninth harmonic is equal to zero and our 15th harmonic is equal to zero and our 21st harmonic is equal to zero. So every sixth odd harmonic is going to equal zero uh, if we have an offset of, of 30 degrees. Now let's apply this to a a series uh, RL circuit. And most loads are inductive in nature that we're going to be applying our inverter to. For example, motors are an inductive load. And one of the things we're going to notice when we apply this in our F sub zero is equal to 60 Hertz. The impedance of our inductance changes. The impedance of our inductance Z sub L is equal to J times XL and XL is equal to omega times L. Or it's equal to two pi F times L. And so as we have a higher frequency, our reactance value X sub L starts to increase. Notice all the way up here, at our 17th harmonic, our frequency of our 17th harmonic is 1,020 hertz, and the reactance is, a, is 128 ohms. And what's going to happen is, is it's going to decrease the current flow for that harmonic. Let's investigate that. Now here we have a table. Again, I show the impedances at the different frequency values for our for our, our 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 inductive load that has a series resistance of 20 ohms and series inductance of 20 millihenries and we can calculate the magnitude of the current for each harmonic uh, n equal to 1 the the fundamental uh, the third harmonic the fifth harmonic by noting that the magnitude is equal to the magnitude of, of the, the voltage divided by the magnitude of the impedance at that value of n. And as, as n increases, our impedance magnitude increases as well as we see in this column of the table. Therefore, our current is going to decrease. Well, in fact, for n equal to 30 degrees, our current is going to equal zero for the third harmonic. It's going to equal zero for the ninth harmonic. It's going to also equal zero for the 15th harmonic and so on and so forth. And so we see that for higher order harmonics, our current drastically decreases because our inductance impedance starts to increase. Now let's define then the total harmonic distortion. So if we look at the, the the current or the line current, THD, it's equal to the summation from n equal two to infinity times I n squared, all divided by the current associated with the fundamental component squared times 100%. And let me just rewrite this. And that's the total harmonic distortion for the line. And for inductive loads, as I just shown in the previous example, the, the total harmonic distortion for current will be less than the total harmonic distortion for the voltage because the, the current magnitudes will, will go down uh, as the frequency goes up due to the inductance. This leads to the definition of what's called the weighted total harmonic distortion. In the weighted total harmonic distortion, we are going to look at a load that is inductive and therefore ZL is equal to J omega L. 
and therefore the the current at each value of the fundamental frequency omega naught 2 omega naught 3 omega naught 4 omega naught so on and so forth our impedance for each one of those harmonic components is going to change so let's look at it from a current perspective we have the summation from n equal 2 to infinity v sub n divided by divided by the magnitude of z quantity squared all divided by v1 over the magnitude of zl and let me put the subscripts there quantity squared times the square root and here we see that this is equal to the summation of vn all over n omega naught l quantity squared and i got to square that term all divided by omega naught times l squared and we'll square root that and from here we can see that the value of omega naught and l will factor out from this equation this results in and let's go to a fresh page the weighted total harmonic distortion is equal to the summation from n equal 2 to infinity v o n over n quantity squared divided by v1 over 1 quantity squared times 100% which is also equal to summation from n equal 2 v n divided by n squared all over v1 times 100% and that is the weighted total harmonic distortion. As you can see, it's weighted by the factor of n, uh, where n is 2, 3, 4, and 5. And this is, again, assumes that we are using an inductive load. And the, the weighted total harmonic distortion accounts for the current, line current through the inductive load. Um, let's go back to our example, and uh, I'm not going to go the no through the numbers on this, but you could cut and paste these into a spreadsheet. And if we looked at our voltage total harmonic distortion, uh, just due to our voltage, that was equal to, or that would, you could see that that's equal to about 28.4%. Uh, again, we would have to take uh, the, the magnitude of these values squared uh, divided by this one squared, um, take the square root of that. Uh, the, the current... The current total harmonic distortion, and that would be uh, the value of all of these values, quantity squared divided by this one squared, take the square root of that. Uh, we could show that that's equal to, uh, for this example, about 11.8%. And that's going to change on how the value of R changes relative to the value of our inductance. The weighted total harmonic distortion for this one, again, in the weighted total harmonic distortion, we assume R is very small relative to our inductance, and that, uh, for this example, is equal to 4.6%. And so uh, the, the, the current total harmonic distortion is going to be somewhere between the weighted total harmonic distortion and the uh, voltage total harmonic distortion, again, depending on the relationship between our value of R and our value of L. If, if R is uh, a zero, uh, the, the current uh, total harmonic distortion and weighted total harmonic distortion will, will be the same. And if R is much, 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 much greater than L, we start approaching the voltage total harmonic distortion. Let's review the key points of this video. Uh, for an inductive load, the line current total harmonic distortion was less than the line voltage total, 
total harmonic distortion due to the increasing impedance associated with our inductance. And this led to the development of what was called the weighted total harmonic distortion. That was equal to the square root for the sum equal n2 to infinity for all of our non-fundamental harmonics, vn over n, so we're weighting by n all over v1 times 100%, and that's the equation for the weighted total harmonic distortion. And then the weighted total harmonic distortion uh, becomes the line current total harmonic distortion when our resistance, our series resistance for our inductive load goes to zero. So that is more on total harmonic distortion uh, as it relates to our inverters. Um, we're going to continue on this series uh, and start looking at PWM-based inverters. Because in the PWM-based inverters, uh, our frequency goes uh, much higher and uh, that series inductance is going to have very high impedance, thereby limiting the ripple current associated with it. So, thanks for watching.